all should know, Battlefield 1's first DLC, They Shall Not Pass, was tested before its launch on the CTE, the community test environment. Three of the maps, the new weapons, the new assignments, the new tank, the Char 2C behemoth, and the French army were all let loose and the community got a chance to test out that brand new content. The plan was to have it on the CTE even earlier than that, but there were a few complications and this meant that most of the feedback that DICE got from publishing all that content couldn't be acted on until after the launch of the DLC. And still now, there are some issues that were found during that testing phase that haven't been fixed yet. For example, the timer on the new game mode Frontlines, it just doesn't work. It's supposed to stop, I think, at 25 minutes, but it just carries on forever. But to be honest, I actually prefer it without a timer because it is just such a good game mode. The early release of all the content for testing purposes is something that's set to continue for Battlefield 1's future DLCs. In the Name of the Tsar comes next with the Russian Empire, and according to DICE, it's likely that content will be coming much sooner than what happened with They Shall Not Pass. Now on the Battlefield 1 CTE Reddit page, in response to some of the issues that are still present in They Shall Not Pass, a Reddit user posted this to the developers. After seeing many problems that there are with the DLC that you didn't test in the CTE, Unbalanced Devil's Anvil, Beyond the Marne, and the Broken Frontlines timer, I suggest you test everything in the CTE for the next DLC to let yourself know about any balance problems or bugs, so the They Shall Not Pass situation will not repeat. DICE responded directly to this through Indigold, who is a developer over at the DICE LA office, and he simply said, we have every intention to do so. This is a very clear message that DICE fully intend to continue utilising the CTE to test brand new content before its official release. And regarding when future maps will be coming to the CTE is information we should soon know according to the devs on Reddit. And that scenario actually comes with a few different responses. You might remember when the They Shall Not Pass content went live on the CTE, there was a lot of discussion about whether that was the right thing to do. First of all, this is a big opportunity for DICE to test the game with real players. What I mean by this is that real players who put a lot of time into the game might be able to offer different feedback or even expose other issues that might have otherwise slipped through the net with a QA team. This mostly covers balance issues, and as we saw with the release of the two brand new operations with the French DLC, these clearly hadn't been tested properly and they were quite poorly balanced. Having the content live early allows the dedicated players in the CTE the chance to expose potential issues which can then be rectified before a final release. Second point of view, and this is pretty much the total opposite, this early release of the content onto the CTE can potentially ruin the surprise and the excitement around said content. Many people actively message me on social media, and we had a few discussions as well about this topic, saying that they'd boycott my coverage of the DLC on the testing servers simply because they didn't want to be spoiled by seeing that new content early. And I totally get that point of view. I'm a little bit numb to that now because being a game changer I get to see a lot of new stuff fairly early but I do still genuinely understand not wanting to see stuff before a proper trailer or a teaser. To put it into another example, if you're excited for Red Dead Redemption 2 and Rockstar just came out tomorrow and were like, here's our game in the middle of development, what do you think? That's going to ruin the surprise for so many people who are currently letting their imaginations go wild with what this game could potentially be like. Sometimes having a curated marketing campaign can be a really good thing to get you excited about the next thing that's coming to your favourite game. I genuinely understand not wanting to see development material before a proper trailer or a teaser. It's just a pile of life. Things get held back all the time and then once a reveal comes around, it tends to be quite a big surprise. So I can understand that feeling for Battlefield 1 as well. And then the third point of view, aggravation. I think this causes a bit of a rift in the community. 
Right now, to access the CTE, you need to be a premium member. And that point alone is enough to fuel the fire. Some players don't think it's right that others get access to new stuff early, even earlier than they already do, because they paid for premium. You end up with more angry and more upset players who don't have the chance to help test out that brand new content. Now I think I sit somewhere in the middle of all this really, with what is essentially a fourth opinion. We have players who've paid for premium to access content two weeks early, who are now playing pre-release content even earlier. We have players who don't want to be spoiled, and we have players who are angry that all of this content is out there to use, but they can't access it. The fourth point of view is this. Why is this all happening in the first place? What's broken down in the chain of development that's led to this point where the community, the normal players, are being utilized as a testing unit? Previously, most games were developed behind closed doors, away from public eyes until such a time it was ready to be released. You then see a trailer to get you excited, maybe some gameplay is released, a release date is given out, and then you spend a few weeks playing just waiting for that awesome new stuff to drop. Now, we already know that DLCs are coming for Battlefield 1, we know what they are, we know their high level focus, and we get to try it all out before the release, ahead of other players. Just as an observation, that is a huge change in such a short space of time. Sure, I can understand perhaps the older system of beta patches, I would think they were called, where a developer might allow players to download a pre-release update to try out and make sure it works, but we've moved from an open to all scenario where the developer would let anybody download that patch into a system where you have to pay money to access the content early and then you can test it. Personally, I don't like the fact that the content ends up on the CTE and is then broadcast around the community for everyone to see. However, I've made it my job to cover that kind of content so it makes no sense that I ignore it. I'd prefer if we move back to an older system where content was held back behind a release date, a return to the days of excitement when a trailer would drop out and we'd all at the same time get to experience that. I don't know about you, but the trailer for They Shall Not Pass, it was really only worth watching the second part because that revealed the fourth map, the elite class, and some of the few things that were held back from that DLC. By the sounds of things, moving forward, the entire DLC is going to be on the CTE, and that essentially renders trailers and teasers completely pointless. We've lost the excitement in the community, I think, and it's been replaced with an early access testing situation, which, yes, is undeniably helpful to the development team for making sure stuff is ready to be released, but it ruins the surprise of brand new content coming to our favourite game. Is it worth sacrificing all that excitement in order to make sure balance and content is working as intended? I think that's a question that DICE appears to have already answered for us. All of that content will be coming to the CTE. However though, there is a part of me that does enjoy seeing DICE reply to all of our comments on the Reddit pages and then see some of that progress into the CTE as brand new content. Can you see why I'm sitting in the middle a little bit here? This whole scenario has good and bad effects on the community who uses it. And something else I want to quickly mention because I think it's relevant here, regardless of which developer replies to the community, whether they're from the LA office or whether they're from the Stockholm office, it shouldn't matter. I've seen a lot of players saying stuff like, give the game to Dice LA, they'll fix it like they did in Battlefield 4. Something you might not have realised is that the team at Dice LA, who helped improve Battlefield 4 and bring in new content, is essentially the same team who are now implementing ammo 2.0, resupply timers, and totally changing the explosive system in Battlefield 1. It's being led by David Serland, who pioneered the CTE in the first place. He's now working back in Stockholm. He used to work for the LA team. What I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter which of the two studios has control over development of this game. DICE is simply one team, and everyone who works there helps develop Battlefield 1. The comments saying DICE LA would be able to make the game better really aren't valid because their development is tied in with the development over in Stockholm. 
it's all one team. So when we give our feedback, it should be to DICE as a whole, not individual studios. I just thought I'd try and address that. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments section. I'll be down there, as always, reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.